there friends, how's it going? David Potts with Song Notes here, and today I have a little treat for you. It's going to be a preview of uh, my beginner blues course that I'm putting together over on my Song Notes website. So in, in this lesson, I'm going to show you uh, an introduction to this two-string shuffle riff technique. You're going to hear this in lots of blues music, lots of blues flavored and blues inspired music. Uh, it's incredibly simple to get going with, right? You're going to be basing things off of these two string chords, which just require one finger to play. And the key of A, right, or the key of E, is gonna be really, really accessible and easy to get going with, right? And I'll show you step by step how we can uh, sort of add little bits and tricks and flourish things on top of that, right? Just by adding and removing a single finger, for example. We get this sound, right? As we switch between A, D, and E, the strings are the only thing that change, the frets of where I'm putting my fingers stay exactly the same. So it makes it totally, totally great uh, to get started with, to, to get going and running with. But even as you spend hours and hours practicing this, there's still gonna be little like joyful little discoveries you can make and little rhythmic pockets you can discover. It's really a, a gold mine of, of play and improvisation, I might say. So um, let's get into this lesson. Now, I have a bunch of bonus materials for this. They're over on my website, songnotes.net, right? That includes a uh, many, many page uh, PDF for this lesson and also all the other beginner blues uh, lessons I've made in this course, right? And also all my other instructional PDFs and all my other uh, course videos, extended videos, PDFs are all available uh, to members on my Song Notes website. So that's a quick plug for my own website. It's built entirely by me, no ads, right? This is totally independent and supported by members. So thanks to all of you who are members. Um, you know you all can watch this over on my website ad-free and you get access to all the extended videos as well, right? Members also get a 50% discount code on all my licensed song sheets. Those are available for separate purposes. Purchase. Uh, they're not included with membership, just to be clear, for copyright reasons, I can't give them away. But um, all my instructional course PDFs and all that sort of thing are included. So let me get to this topic. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. And if you do enjoy and you want to keep going with this, check out my other videos over on the Song Notes website and the Beginner Blues course. And I will see you on the other side of this one. Let's get into it and we'll talk about some two string shuffle riffs. Let's go. So we're going to be looking at three chords for this lesson, right? The A major chord, the D major chord, and the E major chord. But here's the deal. We're never really gonna play these normal sort of full chord voicings that I just played, right? Instead, what we're gonna do is learn the power chord voicings at first, right? Basically, that only means we're gonna be playing two strings of each chord, so it's in a way it's easier to play. So instead of a full A, we would play just the fifth string and the fourth string, right? We could sort of make a full A with our fretting hand like I'm doing here, but even if I just put my index finger on the fourth string second fret, and I just played the fifth and fourth string, right? That's the sort of power chord voicing of A major. That's all we're gonna need to get started with. And likewise for our D, and likewise for our E, okay? We're gonna start with those power chord voicings, but what we wanna do is get good with adding our left, I use my, my left hand or my fretting hand's ring finger here. And I recommend doing that if you can. You're gonna keep your index finger on that second fret note, and you're gonna put your ring finger down on the fourth fret of whatever string you're fretting. So if I'm fretting the fourth string, I'm gonna put my ring finger down on the fourth fret of that string, right? And then I'm gonna get used to going back and forth, okay? Work on a clean sound for all these, all these strums. Nothing rhythmic yet, just kind of working on my, my clean sounds. Same for the D. Here's my power chord. And then I just put my ring finger down. Okay. And then you guessed it, right? Go back and forth. And then for the E, same deal. Two string power chord voicing. Get used to going between this and this, all right? Now what I showed you so far, there's no real rhythm involved. It's all just the clean sound. That's what you want to sort of get uh, comfortable with first is understand where your fingers need to go and be able, even if it's at a totally slow pace, be able to make that clean sound by playing those little chords, right? Right, now let's talk about rhythm, okay? In the previous lesson in this course, we talked about the shuffle rhythm or the swing rhythm feel, right? Where instead of going one and two and three and four and, we're gonna sort of make all those ands happen a little bit late. So it's gonna be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, see that lesson if you need a reminder on that? What we're gonna do is apply that rhythm to the chord voicings we just learned. So check this out. For the A, 
we're basically going to do two plucks of this and then put our ring finger down do two plucks of that and then we're just going to repeat that over and over again right but here's the important part is we want to add that shuffle rhythm so instead of doing this which would be a straight rhythm We're going to play this, which is the same notes, but it has the swing or shuffle feel. Same thing for the D. And same thing for the E. Okay, and that is the sort of foundation of what we're going to be learning here. Okay, now uh, a couple things for the uh, the sort of dynamics here and the strumming. I'm going to talk about those really quick. You're going to notice that I'm doing all down strums right here, right? Okay, you can do that. Later on, you're going to see me actually doing down, up, down, up, down. So if you want to bring in your up strums uh, initially out of the gate, you're free to do that, right? But I'm keeping it all simple with down strums just for now, right? Uh, and the other thing I want to say is when it comes to dynamics and when it comes to the sort of feel and the touch, you're going to notice that in my tabs here, I have the first pluck of each little duo is a little bit bolder, right? The, the, the stroke of, of the pen on the page literally is thicker. That is intentional. That's meant to tell you that that one should be played with a little bit more oomph, right? as opposed to everything being the same volume. If you play every, everything as the same volume, it's not terrible, right? But it's kind of really consistent in a way where we could add a bit more nuance, a bit more feel, a bit more expression by doing sort of Now that's not something I expect you to necessarily master out of the gate, but keep that in mind, okay? Bring dynamics into it, try to do strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, if you can. At least that's one suggestion I have. And, and as you get more comfortable with this, you can play around with your accents, right? You could get a really creative. So lots of uh, little uh, opportunities there for that. But that's one little expression or one little note I want to add about when it comes to expression and adding nuance is you're allowed to sort of use any strumming direction you want. You can do up and down strums. And you also can do, uh, I invite you to explore being a bit more uh, expressive with your dynamics, right? It's not all the same volume of strum all the time. But enough of that detour, let's get back to putting this together into a 12-bar blues sequence here. So we talked about the 12-bar blues in a previous lesson. What we're going to do here is take those shuffle riffs we just learned, and we're going to apply them to a 12-bar blues structure. Okay, it's three lines. I'll just play it for you. And you're going to see me sort of uh, put all these shuffle riffs together in this, in this sort of arrangement. Let's see how it sounds, right? One, two, three, four. repeat it all day till the cows come home. Let me talk about a little bit about what I'm doing here as far as some of the non-obvious things. So if you look at line one here in the very first measure, you're going to notice that in that final eighth note, I didn't write in uh, anything to play, right? And above I wrote how you can use this gap to change chords. Now, this is optional. You can... You can ignore my little note there and you can add an additional strum if you want to be a sort of, uh, you know, fill all the gaps. But when you're getting started with this, I invite you to use that gap 
to get your hand switching to the next chord shape, okay? So if you look at my sequence overall, the way I've written it up is anytime we're about to change chords, that final eighth note, I'll give you an extra space. I give you that gap. And again, that is for you to use if you wish to start the chord change. It's just gonna make things easier for you there, okay? The other thing I wanna notice is, uh, or note, is in the very last measure, we're gonna go back to an E major. And the way I have it tabbed up is just a strum of E. And I write that you can strum or pick as you please. Now, that could mean a few different things. It could mean that you use the shuffle riff version of E major. You're allowed to do that, right? But when it comes to 12 bar blues, lots of times in the very end, the last measure or two, we wanna add you know, something a bit more dramatic, right? I'll get to the topic of turnarounds in future lessons, but something to kind of put a big punctuation, put a, a big bow on the progression and say, hey, this is the end, we're about to start back over again. So one thought is you could just do a single strum of E major, or you could do a, right? I'm just strumming one string at a time. And what I'm doing there is letting my pick catch in the next string every time. Okay, that's one thing you could do. Or you could do a... That's something I like to do. You sort of pluck the bass note, and then we're gonna go up strum, and then sort of mute the strings with our palm. Another up strum. Okay, so in context, There's no uh, limit or rules to what you can do there. I just wanna give you that option to simplify things before we start again, okay? So that's one thing you wanna keep in mind of. I do have a playthrough on my website if you just wanna see this progression played over and over again so you can study it without any talking with the tabs on screen, okay? So let's move into a few ways we can make this pattern a bit more uh, spicy and a bit more uh, expressive, right? There's some notes we can add to this. Uh, the first of these is going to be uh, taking this, that we just learned and replacing it with this. And we can do that for all three of the chords, right? And then the E, right? And likewise, we can play through an entire 12 bar sequence like this. So really quick about the fingers I'm using here is it's building off of the, uh, the thing I showed you in the previous part of this lesson. What we're gonna do is after we add the ring finger, we're gonna keep the ring finger in uh, possession of the ball, so to speak, and we're gonna move it up one fret, okay? So that's gonna be the fifth fret for all of these chords, for the A, for the D, and for the E. We're gonna go from second to fourth to fifth to fourth, and then repeat that pattern. Second, fourth, fifth, fourth. Second, fourth, fifth, now I'm talking about frets here, okay? Where the, the root note of whatever chord we're playing is always gonna be open, okay? We're gonna add the second fret on the next thinnest string. We go to fourth fret, we go to fifth fret, we go back to fourth fret, and then you repeat that cycle, okay? Initially, take this really slow. Practice it in each chord like this, right? You can do all just down strums on the quarter notes, right? One, two, three, four. Now you could go to the D. I don't have it tabbed out on the screen right now, but I want you to just use what you just learned, follow that same spatial pattern, right? Second, fourth, fifth, fourth, second, fourth, fifth, fourth, and then likewise for the E, okay? Second, fourth, fifth, fourth, second, fourth, fifth, fourth. Now if you want, you can keep your index finger down on, this, on the, this, the fretboard the whole time sort of slide it up with your hand. I'm sort of sliding my ring finger. Now, you could use your pinky, right? But I think when you're getting started, it's probably a bit easier just to use your ring finger, let your ring finger do things. Okay, but you can do either one. Now let's look at how this would sound in a 12 bar sequence, and again, I wanna note something here. You're not gonna see me do this in every single measure. Sometimes I'm gonna use what I did in the previous exercise, right? But most of the time I'm gonna use the second to fourth to fifth to fourth motif. So here's what this would sound like in a 12 bar blues context, right? Oh, one, two, three, four.
that's what that would sound like there. Again, I'm sort of using this as an option. It's like an additional play in your playbook, so to speak, if this was sports. You can do the sort of regular shuffle feet thing, right? And then to any degree you want, you could do it all the time or you could do it sparingly. Go up to the fifth fret sometimes. Right, here it comes. Something you can improvise with. You might think of improvisation, <laughs> improv improvisation is only something that has to do with lead guitar, but I think with the blues and these sort of shuffle riffs and, and rhythm and dynamics, you can improvise. You can sort of uh, sort of treat this. Again, I always use the metaphor of, of making tacos where you're going to have possibly, or a lot of the time, you're going to have more than one taco per meal, and you can sort of mix up the ingredient uh, ratios there. This one might have a lot of meat. This one might have no meat. This might have a lot of cheese. This one, you might try the sort of uh, onion salsa thing, right? Treat the blues as the same way. These are all little ingredients that you're putting in front of you, and with every bite you take, so to speak, you can sort of pick the, the ratios you want. Okay, so let's keep on going. I want to show you another one here, right? And if you do need to practice that, I do have the playthrough with the tab on screen, zoomed in, just repeating a few times if you want to access that. It's over on my website, and the tabs are written up in my PDF as well here. This next one is going to spice things up even more, okay? Okay, what this is going to do is take the main shuffle we've already learned. We're hanging out. Okay, I trust you hear that. It's a very sort of distinctive, stylish uh, little flourish there. What we're doing here is on the whatever string is open. Okay, so for the A, it's going to be our fifth string. We're actually going to add the third fret the fourth fret, and then we're going to sort of go up to usually the, the original strum, right? So this is the open and the second, which is our sort of starting point, right? Now there's lots and lots of ways you can use this, right? Um, a few different ways, for example, on the screen right here. Okay, that's the far left version of the three, right? I'm doing uh, one and two. I could repeat that over and over again. We also could use it at the end of every measure, right? Okay, and then likewise, we could do this for the D chord. For the E major, you guessed it. It's the same tabs. We're just going to move this, all the notes one string uh, thicker. Okay, and then back to the A. Let me show you the far right version here. This one's a little bit trickier because the rhythm at the very end, it's going to sound like this. couple things about that far right version is uh, number one my power chord is actually going to be a three string chord open second second that's going to be the very last strum of that far right measure there or the the, the far right uh count in the far right example right see how i'm playing the third and fourth string second fret and if you include the open fifth string that's going to sound good too this is still a power chord actually the root the fifth and then another root Oop, we don't want that this note. This is a, this is a major third that would give uh, that would break the power chord illusion. We want this. The power chord is neither major nor minor. And the last note about that far right example is it has a triplet rhythm here where it's right one and two and three and four and uh, one. Whoops. Okay. 
listen to the song by Sublime. It's called Freeway Time in L.A. County Jail. And in the first 20 seconds of the song, you hear this about three or four times over the A chord and the E chord. And I actually have a whole tutorial teaching you that song, right? A few other songs use it as well. It's by no means uh, invented by Sublime. It's just one of these traditional bluesy things you're going to find. Now, this is um, when you bring in this note. Again, lots of possible ways to use it. I'm gonna show you one 12 bar blues uh, version here that uses this, but this is also gonna be a bit more loose and freewheeling as far as how we apply this, okay? I'm gonna sort of just do a bass line only in my first two measures. Then I'm gonna sort of go to the regular shuffle thing. Then I'm gonna do a bass line only in uh, the, the first two measures of the second line and the third line. Here's what this sounds like. And my whole point in showing you this is when you introduce these options right into your, your, your playing, you can use them however you see fit to create whatever kind of vibe you want, okay? And I'm, I'm mainly showing you this to, to impress upon you the idea that you have options when you're doing this and you can, uh, you can add these to taste however you want. You can explore all kinds of different things, okay? Really fun to just noodle with and, and play. Here's what this third exercise would sound like, right? Oh, one and two and three and four. So that is just one example of what we're talking about when it comes to doing these shuffle riffs as far as adding this. Okay, these notes right here. This is a minor third and a major third. Uh, I'm gonna talk about theory in one of the extended videos I have on this course page. Just scroll down below to see that. And again, all these exercises are available in my PDF for this lesson. And uh, you can view uh, playthroughs of every exercise. It's just a standalone, zoomed in video, no talking with tabs on screen if you want to sort of access them to practice, right? But again, use these uh, exercises I've showed you, not as the only ways you can use these sort of uh, riff ideas when building these sort of shuffle riffs, but rather uh, just possibilities, right? And I explore, I, I, I implore upon you the, the idea of uh, adding these to your skill set, practicing, and then just spending some time playing around and putting together your own little sequences and your own little sort of variations that get you into a rhythmic groove, okay? So check out the uh, lessons further below on this page, and I'll also talk about how you can do this in other keys and do it up the fretboard, right? Okay, you don't have to do it in open position. It is the easiest to do it in open position, specifically in the key of A, but you do have options when you go to other keys. And I'll talk about that in another video as well. All right, so to all of you here on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this uh, video helpful, right? Now, again, if you wanna keep going with this, if you wanna get the extended videos with the tabs on screen, right? If you want to access the PDF for this lesson, for all my other beginner blues lessons, for all my other courses, it's all available at songnotes.net. And even if you come in for just a single month of membership, you get access to all that stuff. You can take it with you, uh, even if you pause the membership or cancel it, right? But again, thank you all who are supporting me. It's really appreciated. And to all of you who are supporting me, watch all the other stuff over on my website, songnotes.net. So thank you all very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and bye-bye.